Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of the Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and the word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Today's reading is from John chapter 15, verse 1 to 7. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be, it will be even more fruitful. Verse 3, you are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. You remain in a vine. Neither can you bear fruits unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burnt. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, Ask whatever you ask, ask whatever you wished, and it will be done for you. This is the word of the Lord. All right. Hello. Good morning, church. Hello. You all can hear me? What's that? Hello. Okay. Uh, everything... Where's that coming from? <laughs> okay, okay. Hello, testing, all right. Okay, all right, that's, okay, that's done with that. All right, well, let's, let's start again. Good morning, church. Switch off all the other mics, all of the... Okay, okay, wait a minute, wait a second. Hello, hello? All right, is that clear? Alright, okay, sorry for that technicality. Okay, take out your sermon notes as we uh, prepare to listen to God's words again this morning. Okay, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah. Oh, wonderful Jesus, wonderful Saviour, mighty God. Lord, we give you all the praise, all honour and all glory. And Lord, this uh, morning, we, once again, we ask for your spirit to be with us, to speak to us, Lord. We want to hear from you, your word, for our lives this morning. And may you speak your words directly into our lives. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, you know, how many of you, have you ever had, uh, had to deal with uh, tech, tech support, you know? When you really got a computer problem or some equipment problem, uh, and you had to telephone the technical support on, on telephone and ask for tech support. Any of you have to do that before? Anybody did that before? No? None, none of you are tech support people. Tech, tech, tech people, huh? Well, as much as you don't like to call the tech support for help, do you know that there's a lot of people that gives a lot of problem to the tech support people as well? All right, and so here are some of the most ridiculous customers who ever call up tech support. All right, the first, well, there's this customer who calls up and she calls up, Hello, tech support, I'm having problems printing in red color. Tech support answer, uh, okay, Do you, are you using a color printer? Oops, sorry. Another example is customer calls up, hello, tech support, my keyboard is not working anymore. Okay, are you sure it is plugged into the computer? Uh, 
how do I make sure it is plugged in? Okay, take your computer, take your keyboard, and walk 10 spaces backwards. If the keyboard follows you, then it is not plugged into the computer. Hello, tech support. My sound card is defective. The right, the, 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 the right balance is coming out from the left speaker, and the left balance is coming out from the right speaker. Just switch the speakers. Hello, tech support. I just bought your latest computer, your most expensive computer, and now suddenly the screen is blank. I was working on it well and the screen just went blank. Okay, uh, is, your, is the monitor on? Is the power on the monitor on? How do I check? Okay, can you follow the cable behind the monitor? Can you see whether is it plugged into the wall? Yes, it is. Can you see the cable behind the monitor? Is it plugged into the computer? Uh, I can't see. It is too dark. Why is it too dark? Uh, the office lights are all off. The only light is, I have is a light coming in from the window. Well, turn on the lights. Lah. I can't. There is a power shortage. <laughs> and that's the lesson for today. You know, no matter how powerful a computer you buy, no matter how expensive, no matter how sophisticated, no matter whether you paid ten thousand dollars for it, doesn't matter if it has the latest technology that it can do the, the most high-end things it can do. But if you do not have power, it ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. It doesn't matter how expensive it is. It doesn't matter how high-end, how sophisticated it is. As long as there is no power, it will never work. And that's the same thing that's true with life, you know. In life, that's the same thing. You know, that it's the same thing with anything that moves. Anything that moves, anything that operates in life needs energy. It needs power. And no matter how sophisticated, it needs power in order to work. No matter how advanced, it needs power. Same like you and us, living human beings. We also need energy, right? We need to eat. We eat so that we have energy to do things. Plants, living plants, they also need energy. They get energy from the sunlight. They get energy from the soil. And so they got energy to do things. The only thing in this world that doesn't need power are dead things. That's the only thing in this world that doesn't need energy are dead things. You look at a rock. You go and look at a rock. A rock doesn't need power. doesn't need any energy. It just lies there. It's dead. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't need energy. Anything else in this world, if you want it to move, you want it to operate, you want it to do something, it needs power. It needs energy. And the same is true for our spirits. All of us, you know, we all have a spirit in us and we need energy. We need power. You know, we need energy in our spirit to maintain relationships. To, to, we need energy in order to, 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 to control our attitude, to, 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 keep a, to have a right attitude. We need energy so that we can keep our emotions in check. We need et energy so that we will be in a good mood. We need energy so that we can always be serving for serving God, serving others, serving our family. We need energy in order to have a good testimony in life, to walk out in the streets, to go out in the streets and to have a testimony to the people around us. We need energy. And we need energy even just to put on a smile. When we come here in church and see people and shake hands, we need energy in order to just smile. You know, how, and to live our lives for God, to live our testimony for God, we need energy. And that's why for many of us, when we are tired or when we are exhausted, we don't function the best. We don't function at the optimum level. Let me ask you, how many of you agree? that it is much harder to smile when you are exhausted. How many of you agree? Is that true? How many of you agree that when you, that, that when you are tired and you are sleepy, you tend to be a little bit more grumpier? How many of you agree? You agree? You know, how many of you agree that you know, when you are tired and exhausted, your mind tends to, think, tends to think a little bit more negatively? Agree? How many of you agree that? How many of you agree that, uh, you know, when you are exhausted and tired, you don't feel like doing anything good? How many of you agree? Agree? And now let me ask the wives here. How many of you agree that your husbands, when they are hungry, they are more angry? 
I hear a very loud yes from the front here. I won't tell you who. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, that's, that's, the, that's the English saying that goes, right? A hungry man is a... We need energy. Because without energy, we can't control, we, can't, we don't have the power to, to keep our anger, to keep our moods, to keep our emotions. And our spirits, we need energy. And the question this morning, friends, for all of you here, is where is your source of energy? Where are you getting your strength from? Where are you getting your energy? What is it that fuels you so that you will do the things that you need to do? You can behave the way you should behave. You, should, you can put that smile on. You can have that emotion, right? What is it that fuels you? What is it that gives you the energy? Well, I'd like to suggest a few types of energy source for people today. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's not, not just for Christians, but for people, humans in general. You can take out your nose. The first point on your nose is this. The first type of Christians are those what I call solar-powered Christians. Solar-powered. Eh, what happened to the projector, the, this screen? Huh? <laughs> okay, okay, everything is just not working today. Alright, the final you got, you got your nose with you. The first point on your nose is solar-powered Christians. A solar-powered Christians, you know, like solar panels, you know, you need sunlight to produce energy. And when it is cloudy or rainy, you don't have power, you know. And, and many Christians are like that. You know, many Christians, you know, they are like fair-weather Christians. They are very energetic when it's sunny and shiny in life. And you know, but you know one thing about solar panels, you know, how, how many of you experienced this before? I mean, Malaysia, not so common, lah, but I've seen it also. But in, the, in overseas, it's more common. Where you have houses, and on top of the roof of the house, you have that big, that, that, that one unit solar panel to heat up the hot water in the house. How many of you have seen that before? How many of you have used that before? All right, you know, I remember there was a time when I was in some place, I can't remember where was I, but I was in this house where there was this solar panel, it was heating hot water, and it was cold, and we need hot water. But every time when we want to use the hot water, and usually it is at night, not the daytime, because you don't need hot water in the day afternoon, right? You need hot water when it is cold at night. And when it's cold at night, most often, there's no more hot water. Either because the water has been used up, there's not enough water left, and... There is no sun to heat up the water at night. And that's the problem with solar panels. You know, you need the sun. You need the sun in order for you to, to, to heat up, to give you energy. And a lot of Christians, they are like that. You know, they are what I call fair weather Christians. It's only when life is good. When things are doing well, when the sun is shining in your life, and you know, your, your career is doing well, your, your, your family is doing well, no argument with the wife, no problems at home, your life is wonderful, you just had a nice hefty meal, you just had a nice juicy steak, and you are just so enjoying life, and then you are so energetic. You are so powered up. You can smile, you can serve, you can do good, you can do anything. Pastor asks you anything, you will do. Because you are powered up. But when the sun goes down, and something hits you, something hits you. And when you have an argument with your wife, when you have a, 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 a breakdown in your career, when you have a problem at work, suddenly, all the energy just dissipates. And you're nothing. You find yourself so exhausted, so grumpy, so, so, so rude, so, 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 no, don't even want to come to church because there's no energy. So the first, and an example of this is Luke 8, 22. You know when the disciples were in the boat? You know the disciples, they were following Jesus. Everywhere Jesus went, the disciples were with Jesus. You know, and they saw all the miracles and they were so excited. Their faith shoot up to the roof. And when they were on the boat, the Bible tells us in Luke 8, you go back and read yourself. You know, when they were in the boat, and suddenly in the boat, a storm came. No more sun. Storm. And suddenly their faith from 100, it went to zero. Because they were just solar powered. When the sun was shining, when miracles were happening, when things were growing, they could see those things, their fate was there. But when disaster strike, their fate sunk. And that's what happened. That's why, you know, and many Christians are like that. And that's why, you know, when, when Satan uh, met, G, when met God, and when they were looking at the earth, and God told Satan, Look at Job. You see, Job, this is such a good Christian. This is such a holy Christian. This is such a good person. Look at how faithful Job is. Look at what Satan replied. Satan replied, God and says in Job 1 9, says, Satan replied to the Lord, Yes, but Job has good reasons to fear God. 
You have always put a wall of protection around him and his home and his property. You have made him prosper in everything he does. Look how rich he is. But reach out and take away everything he has and he will surely curse you to your face. Yes, he's talking about we thank God that that didn't happen to Job. Job didn't curse God to his face. But Satan was speaking a general truth that many Christians are like that. That as long as things are going well in your life, you will praise God. But the minute all those are taken away, your energy depletes and you are at ground zero. So the first are solar-powered Christians. The second in your notes you can write is what I call turbo-powered Christians. Turbo-powered Christians. You know, how many of you have seen racing? You know, not, not, not those are Formula One type of racing, but those stock car types of racing. They modify the cars and they go racing. It's a bit like, okay, how many of you have watched Fast and Furious before? Alright, you know those type of shows, Fast and Furious? Alright, they are there, they are racing, they race in the streets, they race in the city, they race in the racing track, they race everywhere. And they modify the cars. And you'll notice in one of some of those episodes, there will be some of those cars, they will have certain gas tanks. They call it nitro oxide tanks in the car. And what those tanks do is when they are almost reaching the finishing line and there's a car next to them and they are neck to neck with each other. They are racing. They are trying to see who gets faster and they still just need that extra boost of energy. And so they switch on the switch. The nitro goes into the engine and suddenly it's turbocharged. Boom! The flames shoot on the engine and the car goes into the finishing line. You all watch movies? Never watch movies? Ah? You can imagine, right? Can you imagine, right? So, phew, that's how it goes. And that is what you call turbocharged. And usually, after the fella shoots over the finish, he overpowers the car, over turbo the car. When he reaches the finishing lines, the engine explodes or turns into flame and the car, blah, 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 dead. And that's what turbocharged do. You know, we, we, it's just a sudden burst of energy. It burns up everything, it destroys everything, and then after that, it's completely depleted, completely wasted. And some Christians are like that. Some Christians are like that. You know, they, 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 maybe because they had a certain, certain experience in their life. Whether they, they, just, they just became a Christian, they suddenly realized that God loves them, or maybe God did a miracle in their life, suddenly they got healed of a sickness, or suddenly something, a, a miracle happened, or they got a breakthrough, or they got a sudden, a sudden supercharged experience. And suddenly, they are supercharged. You know, they will come to church, they will sit down, they will do everything for you, they will serve, they will get involved in 20 ministries, they will do anything, they will tithe, they will give not only what, 10%, they give their whole month's salary into the offering bank, and they are just so excited for God. And after two, three months, they disappear. They dissipate. The energy is all lost. You know, Chris, have you seen Christians like that? You know, I remember this old guy, and just like that, I remember a, 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 a member, not in Malacca, but it was this member, he was just so excited, he was a new Christian, he just came to know God, and he was so excited for God, and he was involved in everything, he went for every Bible study in the church, he went for every service, every, the church has three, four services, he went for all services, he did everything, ten times more than any Christians in the church. But after three months, we know what happened to him. And today, he's no longer even a Christian. He's no longer in the church. It just disappeared. And that's what Jesus warned about. In Matthew 13, he says this, But he who received the seed on stony places, he's talking about the parable of the seed and the sower, and then, but he who received the seed on stony places, this is he who heard, hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. It's just a wow. It's just a turbo charge. Just a turbo boost. Pshoom, pshoom. And after that, plop, flat, gate, wasted. So the first is a solar-powered Christian. The second is a turbo-powered Christian. The third is what I call a dynamo-powered Christian. Dynamo-powered. How many of you still remember the good old days? I, talk, I, I, I say that as though I'm so old. Uh. But the good old days, I'm sure you all will remember. Uh. You all remember bicycles? When you used to go to school on bicycles, and in your bicycle, at the back wheel of your bicycle, there will be one little small thing like this size, and when you pedal, the thing will turn, and when the thing turn, your little lamp in front of your bicycle will have light. You all remember that? The young, those of you below 20s, I don't think you will know that. 
Nowadays, your bicycle comes with battery powered, whatever powered, like nuclear powered light also you have already. Like. Okay, so I don't know what you have today. All right, but you know, those of you, you remember those, those are dynamo powered. You know, you need, you, need, you need to turn the dynamo. As long as you keep turning the dynamo, there will be light. As long as once you stop turning, and that's the problem with dynamo bike battery, uh, lights, you know. Your cycling is at night. You need the light at night, right? You don't need the light on the daytime. You only need the night light at night. And when you're cycling, suddenly you come to a junction, you stop because it's a junction. And after you stop, you stop pedaling, you stop long enough, suddenly light go off. Light go off, you're in the middle of the junction, it's dark, you can't see anything. And you can't pedal your bicycle because you don't know what's in front of you, you're stuck. All right, and that's the problem with dynamo powered batch, powered lights. And but 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 that's what we used to have. We used to have dynamos that powers that powers our bicycle lights. And many Christians are like that, you know. You know, we are like we are, we are, you know we need we need to be cranked up. We need to be turning. You know, you need to be busy. As long as you come to church, as long as you are busy, as long as pastor gives you things to do, as long as pastor gives you ministry to work on, as long as you have something to do, something that keeps you busy in the church fired up. You are all energetic. You are all powered up for God. But the minute you have taken all these ministries are taken away, you, you are lost. You are lost. You know, it's like Martha. Remember the story of Jesus, uh, Mary and Martha? You know, they were in the, Jesus came to Martha's house, Mary's house, and Jesus was sitting there, and Martha was just so busy running all over the place, and that's where she gets energy from to do everything. She's running, 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 do this, do that, do this, do that. And when Jesus say, you know, just, just, just stop, just come down like Mary, just sit down and relax. Spend time with me. Huh? Alien. Just cannot, cannot work, cannot operate that way. As many Christians are like that. Some Christians, they're just like that, you know. As long as they have something to do in the church, as long as they have a ministry that they're involved in, they can have, uh, it keeps them moving. It keeps them excited. As long as they have something to do. Even though it's detrimental to their health, detrimental to their family, but yet they find a sense of belonging in the things that keeps them busy. In the things that keep them moving, keep them busy, they find their energy, they find their strength, they find their sense of belonging. But when God asks you to just sit at my feet, just sit at my feet, they find it lost. They find it lost. And they just need to keep doing something. And some Christians are like that. They just need to keep moving even, even though it will hurt them. Even though it, will, it, 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 it is costing them, but yet they need to because that's where their energy comes from. You know, it's like the story of these uh, three people who were uh, sentenced to death. And so they are waiting on death row. They are about to be executed in the, uh, on the electric chair. And there was there among them, there was a doctor, a lawyer, and an engineer. All right, and so they, 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 they set up the electric chair and they bring the first person, they bring the doctor up, put him on the chair. And they switch on the, they flip the switch. Zip! Nothing happened. Then somehow in that state, there's a state law there that says, if the person is placed on the chair and when you flip the switch, the fellow doesn't die, he is free to go. He's pardoned and free. So, choop, he's pardoned and free. So he goes. Next, they bring the lawyer and ask the lawyer to sit down. Then he ask the lawyer, do you have anything you want to say with your last words? The lawyer say, no. Nope. Then they turn the switch, flip it on, zip! Nothing happens. The lawyer is free to go. Next, they bring the engineer. Sit down. All right. Do you have any last words to say? Then the engineer look for a moment, stare at the wall, and they say, wait, 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 wait. I noticed your problem. The red wire and blue wire is crossed. You turn it back and the chair will work. Sometimes we are just like that. We just need to keep getting busy. We find strength in our busyness. We find strength in doing what we do, our work. And for some of us, if that's, that's, that's the case, and once that strength is taken away, you're lost. I know of worship leaders who find strength in serving in the worship team. And that's where they find their strength, they find their joy. But the moment that is taken away from them, they dissipate. They disappear. I find people who find joy in coming to church, in doing, in doing uh, ushering or something. But once that is taken away, they lose their purpose. They lose their sense of joy. Because their strength was found in the busyness that they do. And once it's removed, they lose it. I find people who find their strength in being in leadership. That as long as I'm an LCEC member or a committee member, yes, I'm excited for the church. But once that's taken away, 
my energy dissipates. So the first is a solar-powered Christian. The second is a turbo-powered. The third is a dynamo-powered. The fourth is called a piezo-powered Christians. Piezo-powered. Now, how many of you ever heard this term before? Piezo. Have you heard of piezo-electric or piezo-electronics? Any of you heard of this term before? Wow, terrible. Lah. 300 people here, no, not, not one person can, can, can know the term. Piezo-electric. Alright, basically, piezoelectric is a new kind of technology. Not a new kind. It's a very old technology, even since those olden days. How many of you wear those type of watches? Ah? Those analog watches where you, 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 as, long as, you, as long as your hand is moving, your watch keeps running. The minute your hand stops moving, the watch stops. <laughs> How many of you remember that type of, that type of watches? Okay, I don't, I don't know if you still, you still use that type of watch or not. You know, my dad, he loved that type of watch. And he will always use that type of watch. As long as he keeps moving his hand, the, 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 the watch keeps running. All right? And so, basically, a piezoelectric is basically a certain material. Okay, the word piezo actually comes from the Greek word to mean press, or you pressure, you press on top. All right? And a piezoelectric, electronic, is a kind of material that when you apply pressure, when you press on top of it, or you apply pressure, you apply stress to it, then it generates current, it generates electricity. And that's what that's, that's, that's a technology that's being used widely nowadays. In fact, they are looking at things like uh, in the roads. You know, when you have roads, very busy highways, you want to save electricity. You put the piezo material underneath the road, so cars drive by, boom, 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 press, press on the thing, electric power your power your street lamps. You know? or some they are even looking at looking at technology where they put piezo materials in your shoes. And then soldiers will wear them. And so soldiers go to war, they'll be running and shooting and everything. And this electric will power their equipment, the equipment that the soldiers carry. So they don't have to carry batteries all over the place. And so they're looking at piezoelectric. And it's very powerful, very wonderful technology. And sometimes I look at it and say, yeah, you know, a lot of Christians are like that. Some Christians are like that. You know, you need to press on them. They need that stress. They need that stress. The minute there's no press, they, they, they go wild. But once you keep pressure on them, yes, they behave. Like many of you right here. When pastors say, do journaling, pastor come and check, are you doing? Okay, we do, we do, we do, we do. When pastor stop checking, no more. No energy to do journaling anymore. No energy to do devotion anymore. No energy to go for DG anymore. Why? Because pastor stop pressing on you. But some Christians are like that. We need that press. We need that inspection. We need that supervision. We need that, we need that pressure. As long as we are being pressured, we are being pushed, we will do it. But the moment that pressure is lifted, all hells break loose. And some Christians are like that. So don't friends, friends what, is our, what is your power source? Where do you get your energy from? And that brings me to the fifth type. And that's the, not in your notes, but you can write number five. Number five is, and this affects all of us. Actually, all of us are like this. All right? And number five is what I call a battery-powered Christian. A battery-powered Christian. You all know what a battery is, lah, right? And, you know, all of you have a handphone, right? Anybody here don't have a handphone? All of, you, all of you have a handphone these days. And we know that, you know, all of you, if all of you, those of you have a handphone, without fail, there will be a moment in your life without fear. I'm sure all of you have experienced this. A moment in your life when you had your handphone and you are, you are, you are, you are nowhere near a, cha a charge point. You are nowhere near an electrical point and you are running out of battery and you need to make emergency phone calls. You need to do something important and your phone is running out of batteries. Everyone, I'm sure everyone will have experienced that in life, right? And, I, and that's what happened with battery-powered equipments. They always run out of battery. You remember the, those old days? I don't know why I'm talking about old days today. Like so many old days. You know, when handphone first came out, the old Motorola handphone, the huge, big Motorola handphone. You remember those handphones? We used to carry them around. And not only we carry the handphone around, we used to carry spare batteries around. You all remember that? We used to have a handphone and we'll carry pockets, two or three extra batteries wherever we go. Because why? The battery runs out. The battery runs out. But we need the battery. And that's the problem with batteries, you see. Batteries don't produce power. Do you realize that? Batteries don't produce power. It's not like solar energy, it produces power. It is not like dynamo, you crank it, it produces power. Battery doesn't produce power. 
The only thing battery does is battery stores power. It stores energy, and when you need it, it gives it out. It doesn't produce. It just stores the energy. And that's what a battery does. And you know, many of us Christians here, you know, listen, listen carefully, friends. And I mean, that's the reason why every night when we go home, we have to plug our phone into the wall to charge. And this, listen carefully, this is the problem. This is the problem for many Christians today. Most of us, if not all of us, behave like battery-powered Christians. You know, we go live our lives out in the world. We do whatever we want. And at night when we come home, or in the morning we come home, or on Sundays we come, we plug ourselves to the charger. And hopefully we get charged up. We want our battery to get recharged. And so we come, we charge. We charge either by coming on Sunday, worship the Lord. Okay, we are charging. We come on early Sunday, uh, every morning, pastor stay, do devotion. Okay, la, so we go and do devotion. So we are charging our batteries. But the rest of the day, we pluck ourselves out and we go enjoy the rest of our lives. And that's the problem, friends. That's where the problem, friends, because, because you see, we don't want to remain plugged in. We like to be portable. We like to move around. We like to float around. And, and that, that is fine, you know. That is fine when it comes to handphones. I mean, we like the purpose of handphones, why it's so popular today is because it is not plugged into the wall. We can take it wherever we go. You remember those, those good old days again when we had the fixed lines on the, fo- on the wall? You know, we never, nobody likes fixed lines. You take it, you fix it, so you can't even talk on your bed. On the telephone ring, I have to run down all the way to the kitchen, answer the phone. So some of us are more creative. We put a fixed line in the kitchen, we put a fixed line in the bedroom, we put a fixed line in the toilet. So that we can answer the phones wherever we are. But then still, it's still limited because there is a fixed line. We are bound by the cable, we are stuck to the wall. And then lo and behold came technology and they introduced us to handphones. Suddenly now you can unplug from the wall and go everywhere you are. But there's a problem. You run out of batteries. Do you realise that the fixed line never ran out of batteries before? Have you ever had a fixed line and you answer the fixed line, uh, oh, T, 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 battery running out? Never. Because the fixed line is always plugged into the main source, to the main energy. The problem with Christians is we don't want to be plugged in. We want to be free. We want to be portable. We want to go and do what we want. If I can write the next point of your notes is this, is that we were never designed to be unplugged from the main source. We were never designed. You know, you and I, we are not created to be portable Christians. We are never created to be unplugged from the main source. But most of us, we want to do that. And, and, and that's why when we, we, say, we, we come, we, charge, we get our charging. We come to God, we get our charging. You know, we do our devotions to get charged up. We go for church service to get charged up. But the rest of the day, we are unplugged. The rest of our lives, we are unplugged. And that's why we find, when it, when it comes to time in our days, sometimes we find just so exhausted, so tired, not physically, but in our spirit, to do the things we ought to do. It's like sometimes we go to our office and we know at that moment, you know, we know, we know that we need to, 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 to be a testimony at that moment. But rather than holding our tongue to be a testimony at the moment, because we have no energy left, we become an untestimony, a bad testimony. There are times when we walk around in the shopping complex, supermarket with our family, and we walk and we pass by people who are in need, and we see there's a need there, and we know there's something that we can do, but yet... Because we have no energy left, we just keep on walking. Because why? We are unplugged. We are not connected. Our batteries get depleted. And that's why John 15 says this, when Jesus was talking to the disciples, he was talking to them about abiding in me, about me and being in the branches. You know, you know that whole story, that, that, that whole parable. But let me just highlight to you, verse 4, is Jesus says this, Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, Unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. Listen carefully to the last verse. For without me, you can do... What can you do, church? You can do... You can do... Nothing. Nothing. It's not 
saying that you can do some things. He didn't say that you can do certain things and certain things you can't do. No. You can do nothing. Nothing. It's serious, you know, friends. It's nothing. And that's why Jesus says, you need to abide in me. And he's not talking about just getting charged in the morning, just getting charged at night, or just getting charged in a Sunday service. No. This is not, not talking about you just get, getting yourself charged up here and there. You know, and most of the times when we get charged up, so we don't get charged up full. We charge, we charge for 10, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. Battery, ta, battery belum penuh lagi lah. And that's why we run out. We run out. And that's why we go back to our families. When we see our families, when there's a small spark, we blur, we blur out in, and fight. Why? Because we run out of energy. Because we don't get charged up full. Why? Because we are not plugged in. We are not plugged in. So what can we do, friends? Well, let me ask you this. Imagine, how, how would it be if your handphone that you have, battery-powered handphone, imagine if it's always permanently plugged into the charger. Permanently. Never unplug. But you can still take it wherever you go. It is still portable wherever you go. It's as though it's, there's no wire. There is nothing that's, that's linking it to the wall. You can carry it everywhere, but it is always permanently charging. Well, if that's the technology that comes out that day, I think that would be the most, most popular phone to be sold. And technology is catching up. Well, although we don't have such a technology with handphone, but you know the good news is, we have such a technology in our Christian life, in our, in, our, in our spirit, we have such a technology. In fact, you can write the next point of your notes is this, learn to stay permanently connected through constant communing with the Holy Spirit. Learn to stay permanently connected, permanently charging, permanent, permanently plugged into the main source through constant communing with the Holy Spirit. Like Jesus said, you know, I am, John 15, he said, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bear much fruit. We need to abide. It's not just a temporary abide. It is not just an early morning devotion abide. It's not just a Sunday worship service abide. It is a constant, permanent, ongoing abiding in me. And how do we do that? Well, Romans 8 tells us this, But if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells, dwells where? Where does this Spirit dwell? The Spirit who raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in? In where? Church, in where? In you. The Spirit of God dwells in you. And in other words, we have that power source, that unlimited main supply is in us. It's in our spirit, it's dwelling inside of us. We carry it wherever we go. We don't need to just be in morning devotion in order to be charged up. We don't need to attend Sunday service just to be charged up. The main source is in us. The main power supply is in us. But the problem is this. You know, it's like, it's like one time, you know, I had this, I had this problem. You know, you know, I had those handphones, the charger, you know the charger? Where the charger is not a fixed cable, the charger, and you have a special cable that you can pull out from the charger and plug into another charger, that type of cable, to the handphone. Alright, that, that, that type of charger I had. And so at one time, I had a problem with my charger. My phone wasn't charging. And so what I did, the first thing I did, I go and buy a new charger. Lah. And after I buy the new charger, I plug in, it still didn't work. It was still not charging. Then only then did I realize, oops, maybe it wasn't the charger that was the problem, but it was the cable. And when I changed the cable, and I realized, eh, I just wasted buying a, new, a, a spare charger now. Now I got two chargers. But sometimes that's what we do, you see. It, it's not, sometimes it's not, it's not the problem with the main supply. It's the problem with our connection. And it's what God is saying. The main supply is in us. The power of God is in us. The problem we have today is our connection. It's the wire in us. And that's why we need to learn. You know, you need to learn to have a constant communing with the Holy Spirit. Because that's where we get our strength from. That's how we are always connected to the main supply. 
What do I mean by constant communing? You know, is, you know, many of us, that's the problem with most Christians today. We are only in communing, we are only communing with God when we are do, reading our Bible, when we are doing devotion, or when we come to Sunday service. That's the only time we commune with God. But friends, we need to learn. We need to learn to be constantly in communion. 24-7, we are always in communion with God. You know, even right now when I'm preaching with you all, when I'm talking to you all, I'm also in communion with the Holy Spirit. I'm talking to the Holy Spirit. You know, we call it multitasking, yes, but it's, we all need, all need to learn to multitask. And I'm, I'm communing the Holy Spirit. As I'm looking at the audience, I'm looking at your faces. I'm not just looking at your faces, whether you're yawning, whether you're sleepy, whether you're daydreaming, no. But I'm looking at you and I'm asking the Holy Spirit, what are they saying? What are they feeling? And right now, even right now, as I, as I preach, the more I preach, you know, I have my notes, I have my data, yes, I have everything, I do my homework, yes. But at the same time, I'm still in communion with the Holy Spirit and I'm asking the Holy Spirit, what do I need to say next? Do I need to tweak, the, do I need to tweak it? Do I need to change what I'm saying? Do I need to say something different? Why? And it's all happening in my mind. You don't see it, but it's all happening between me when I look at you and I talk to the Holy Spirit and say, hey, what do I say to them? These are the notes I have in my head. But at the same time, what are you telling me that they need to hear? And some of the examples change. Some of the st stories change. Some of the emphasis change as I preach, as I speak, as I commune with the Holy Spirit. And that's what we need to learn, friends. You need to learn to be in constant communion. When you walk in the shopping complex, when you go to the supermarket with your friends, you also need to be in communion with the Holy Spirit. When you sit down and have dinner with your family and you're talking and you're laughing with your family, you are still in communion with the Holy Spirit. When you're driving on the road from point A to point B, you're still in communion with the Holy Spirit. And friends, we need to learn to tap into that. Friends, and until and unless you learn to tap into that, you will never fully understand, the, 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 you'll never grasp the full power of the Holy Spirit in you. Because your connection has a problem. Your connection has a problem. So how do we do that? How do we learn, start learning to do that? First Thessalonians 15, 16-19 says this, you know, it's a, it's a small passage, just plucked out from Scripture. But the last verse says this in verse 19. It says, do not quench the Spirit. Do not quench the Spirit. That was the conclusion. Do not quench. How will you not quench? What should you do so that you don't quench the Spirit? Go back up to verse 16. It says, rejoice always. Rejoice. You know, the Spirit is inside of you. But you can quench the Spirit. You can break that connection. When you stop rejoicing, always be, always rejoice. Even there's problems, even there's difficulties, even there's there whatever headaches when people scold you, people shout at your face, whatever it is, rejoice. Because it's that rejoicing that keeps you connected to the Holy Spirit. Learn to rejoice. Secondly, it says pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. What is pray? The problem is when we see the word pray, we always think about intercession. And so we're saying, huh? How to pray without ceasing, ah? Non-stop. Okay, Lord, I pray for Malaysia, Lord. You pray. I pray for my children. Bless my children. Non-stop without ceasing. That's impossible. But the word pray doesn't mean intercession. Pray means communing, talking, conversing with God. And let's say what, that's what I was talking about just now. You are in constant communion with God. You are constantly conversing with God. And that you can do without ceasing. You can always be aware. You can even in conversations, wherever you are, whatever you are doing, you are conversing with God. And finally, in everything, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. Rejoice. Give thanks. The moment we start being ungrateful for things, the moment we start not rejoicing for things, we break that connection with the Holy Spirit. And so friends, as we close, I want to ask you again, what's your power source? What powers you? What gives you the energy to do, to live the life that you ought to live? Is it what's happening in your life? If the things in your life is doing well, you're doing well? Is it that, that excitement when you have something special happen? Wow, you're so excited. Is it you find your worth in the busyness that you're doing for God? Or is it that you need that pressure on you? You need someone to monitor you, then you behave. May I encourage you, friends, this morning? Let's not be any of those. Let's learn to be permanently connected at all times. 
and you'll find yourself, if you learn to be permanently connected friends, then you'll find yourself that no matter the circumstances, no matter the situation, no matter how, whatever is happening in your life, there will be a strength in you that can endure all things. There's a strength in you that will keep you smiling even though there's no reason to smile. There will be a strength in you that keeps you being loving even though there's every reason to be hateful. There will be a strength in you that keeps you to forgive if, even though you have every reason to be bitter. There will be a strength in you to love even when you just don't see the need to. But you need to be connected. You need to be connected. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Saviour, mighty God. Lord, we give you all the praise. All honour and all glory. And Lord, this morning we ask for you to speak to us once again, Lord. Search our hearts, O oh God. Let us see in us, Lord, what our true heart is. What is it that we draw our strength from? And help us to realise, Lord, that the only strength we need is you. And we need to draw that strength from you, Lord. Not from our own works, not from our own beings, but only from you. Help us to realize that. Help us to be permanently connected to you, Lord, in our lives, in every waking moment of our lives. Lord, I just commit each and every one of us unto your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.